workspace and doc configuration, how to organize things so we compose faster, so we can focus more on composing and less in the setting up things and the technical side of things. We love gear, we love our studio and making it look better and have more things, but truly we don't need that much. We like to be surrounded with the stuff that makes us feel good. But the truth is that the tools that we use 99% of the time are a computer, and the keyboard, that's the most important part, the most powerful computer that you can afford. Keyboard is this guy here, and MIDI controller is this guy here. You're gonna use a keyboard to input the MIDI notes. You're gonna use the MIDI controller to record dynamics. The velocity curves fading, expression, CC2, which is breath control to control vibrato, automate panning, things like this. We use it while we are composing. Then sometimes we are going to use something that's called a DAW controller. This is a very old, cheap, bulky, not very precise, not the best. All right, all right, I get it. DAW controller. This is motorized and basically this controls your sequencer. Basically, it's gonna control the volume of the tracks in your sequencer. If you move a track in your sequencer, it's gonna automatically move here. We do not need this for composing. It is useful for mixing, especially to automate volume and things like this. Real volume, like track volume. You can use a touch screen, an iPad or something like this, where you can set up all these functions. Functions like DAW controller type of thing, or you can set up functions for like MIDI controller type of thing. You can do way more things than what you can do with these two guys. Many composers use it. I did use it for a while. I felt attracted the idea of having the biggest template, the more complex, the more powerful. And when I reached that point, because I have so much going on, the more complex your system is, the more chances for it to break down or to have a crisis or to have some sort of problem. You spend more time troubleshooting than actually composing. At that time, I went from that big massive setup in Mac based system to just one computer PC. I did the entire switch. I tried to simplify to the max. So I had developed with a developer a software with a touch screen so I could create my own buttons. But then I had one problem, which is when you have a screen here, you have to move your hand like this. And even when you are in editing mode with the hands here, I still have to move the hand quite a bit. And I figured if I had something like this, how fast could I access this? I always have the hand here when I'm editing and most of the stuff that I had here in my iPad was the stuff that I used while I was editing. I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough, just 12 buttons, you know, optimizing and just putting here what's most important for you. With the mouse, I can do things like, I need to merge these two guys, boom, merge or I need to show just a group of tracks, I can show the entire template, or I can show just the track that I'm using in this specific moment. I can activate and deactivate constraint delay compensation. So I activate all the plugins and deactivate all the plugins. And what things do I choose to do? The things that I do most often. If I can create a shortcut or a macro that does that for me, a click of a button, fantastic. I still have shortcuts here. The functions that I use when I'm in this position, in the composing position, so it's close. The way I used to work is I have three screens. The center one is a big screen. I like it very much because it's a true 4K screen and it's big. It's like the type of 4K that's actually useful. And so when I put this in 4K, there's a lot that I can fit here. And when I'm streaming, I do like 150%, so it's more like 2 0.5k. But when I'm composing, I can do this 4k. It's big. It's truly big. And it's not like the typical wide screen, which are great. But to me, it's also important for it to be tall. I don't need to see things wide. In the past, if I needed to edit a MIDI region, I would double click this and this would open here. I've got this here. I've got this there. And if I need to edit something else, I'll select it here. It shows up there. And then at some point I'm like, this is a little bit dumb on a smaller screen, I can do so much more here than there in that other small screen. If I wanna see something, I just double click it here. If I wanna get away from here, I hit W, goes away. What are the things that I have configured in my template that speed up my composing workflow? I've got retrospective record active. Wait, what is that? I play the line, whatever it is, several times. The last take, boom, I record. There are other ways of doing this. Yes, you can perform this several times. And then QS has a function where you hit that key and it'll show all the last takes. I personally don't need that. When I hear the good one, it's like, this is the good one, boom, and I record. And it's like, yeah, but you could, you know, do several passes and then select the best 
speed of each one of these passes. Yes, I don't do that. I record something when I get it. Oh, this is good. Hit R, record entire thing. That's how I work. Retrospective record works for me. That way where the last one is the good one. Q for quantizing is an obvious one. J for like the snap to grid. So I have J configure for this. Then I've got W to close windows. I use these guys a lot. You've seen me when I'm composing and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll have J activated and then I'll do this and boom, it snaps. And I'm like, oh crap. And I just use this one to kind of like position it wherever I want. And I'm trying to record something here. Usually it's, it's, I'm gonna be here like one, two, three, four. And I'm like, one second, let me just get closer. And I'll get closer like this for the last one. And I use these guys. This is basically the minus and plus sign here that moves the playback bar. Negative delay in all my tracks. That's something that for all the tracks to be aligned, there are some samples where the rhythmic peak is a little bit later than others. As I'm composing, if I identify a track that needs a little bit of negative delay because it has a slower attack, I'll add a little bit of negative delay here. If I saw that these flutes compared to other instruments have a slow attack, let's try minus 10 milliseconds up here. Let's see. Huh, no, it's still a little bit late. Let's try a little bit more minus 20 milliseconds again. Now I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm talking about these guys. So then when I quantize everything, everything sounds aligned and there is not specific parts that always sounds late. All tracks, okay, I have a way to show and hide tracks. Sometimes I just want to see a specific group of tracks, the tracks that I'm working with at this specific moment. Sometimes I just need to see the MIDI tracks. Sometimes I need to see the, the returns and all that. The way this is done is just configuring different views and here visibility, you know, selecting which tracks you want to see and you want to hide. And then when you've got the configuration that you want, you're going to go here to update configuration and that's it. This, uh, one and two are the ones that I use and I've got this key switch assigned here and so in this key switch control alt shift one and then I have these the mouse here which is this Razer Naga Pro and in this configuration this is the guide number five is shift control alt one and number six is shift control alt two and so if I want to see just uh, the track that I'm using in this sequence at the moment, that's what I do. If I want to see the entire template, I just hit one button here. It changes the track that I see and I can do any configuration that I want. Constraint delay compensation is something that I use all the time as well. This guy here up here is the mixer. I've got a few plugins. These are my stems. It says 23.8 milliseconds, 23.8 milliseconds, 48.1 milliseconds, etc. Why all these milliseconds? If I deactivate this plugin, all of a sudden it goes down to 22 milliseconds. Happens to be that there are some plugins that add latency. It's what it is. It's okay when we are mixing, no problem. When we are composing though, I can do it, but it is hard. Not quite my tempo. Conley? One, two. I was able to do it, but if we go here, what I had to do is play ahead, very ahead. So what I hear because of the latency was actually in sync with the music. And now I have to go here and move it like this and adjust this and it's just a pain. And so if instead you're like, there's no way I'm going to work like this, you're going to start optimizing your template. What plugins are adding latency? Can I get rid of any of the plugins that add latency? And at some point you are like, why do I go through all this trouble if the plugins that I use, I like them because they sound good. And if I truly need that fast response of my template, I can do that click of a button. Constraint delay compensation is this guy here. And you've got two options. You either go here and click, or in my case, I assigned it to a button here, click and boom. And then now all these plugins have been deactivated at the click of a button. Now with this, I have all this latency that is so annoying for fast ostinatos. But if I need it to be more tight, now it's way easier. It's a small little thing. It takes a little bit to get it configured, but it is so meaningful. It makes such a big difference when you're composing. So MIDI record mode to me is very important. Here's the way I compose. So let's imagine just for a second, I want to record like three layers, but as I'm recording the different layers, I want to see what's going on. To me, it's very important that when I'm looking here at the piano roll, that I still can see the last thing, the last thing that I did. And so uh, this guy here, record in editor, if it's not enabled, 
it will create a new region. I'll stop seeing all this and I'll see the new nodes that I just entered. <clears throat> that is not what I want. I want to see what I wrote earlier and what I just written. And now I know exactly what I've got here. This is the closest thing to using a score editor where you are actually inputting each note as you see them and, and you can hear where this is going musically. I can see this line here. I can see the counterpoint kind of here. To me, this is very important. Otherwise, I would not be able to write something like this in one pass. And this is just one instrument. I could now go to, let's say, cellos. I know that the violins are here, violins, and now I can select the cellos. I'm gonna scroll this up a little bit and do the second line. And hit R, and here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe this note is like, no, I want this last note to be a little bit longer. So, key switch. Yeah. Key switch here, same deal. So. I need to see the music and what's going on harmonically. And I need to see the chords and the melodies, counter melodies and all that. Without this guy being active, it's not that my music is complex or anything, but I wouldn't be able to compose the way I compose if I didn't have this. Another thing that's very important to me is that when I click play, it starts playing. When I pause, it goes back here. It doesn't stay here. It goes back where it was. Because I'll try it many times till, oh, this is the good one. Hit R, retrospective record, done. So these three things are super important to me. Playback, go back to the initial position. Two, to be able to see all these things here, record in editor. And three, retrospective record. This is the way I compose. Congrats, you watched the video till the end. Amazing. I put together my template i downloaded the file and i uploaded it so you can download it for free i'm talking about my orchestral template meaning all the instruments loaded and how i've got it configured so i can put my hands on the keyboard and start composing and not just that but also my tablet is organized so it mixes the music automatically for you so i added a link below just click download and also you'll be downloading lots of extra free stuff that i include in this kind of like bundle the list of the libraries that i use and mixing and mastering course that's usually paid and I included this for free just through this link. Also lots of analyzed scores, Jason Bourne, Captain America and so much more Harry Potter transcribed, analyzed, reduced and then videos of myself kind of like recreating that style. If you don't read music you can replicate the style step by step just by watching me. Alright cool that's all. Click the link below, download all that free stuff. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching our videos. You're one of us. Consider subscribing if you haven't already so YouTube reminds you whenever we publish these videos. We'll continue to do more and to bring value to the community. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.